Welcome everyone to the Money and Me podcast. My name is Harish. I am your host. In this podcast, you get to hear some of the most insightful interviews from the experts around the globe. And for the same today, I have a very special person by my side. His name is Richard D'Souza. He was the owner of NetSpace Internet Solution and currently the CEO of Altcoin Trader. So Richard, first of all, how are you feeling today? And take like 30 seconds to extend this introduction so that like viewers would connect with you just better. Raj, thanks very much for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. I am absolutely passionate about crypto. So any chance that I get to share and talk about crypto is really, it's, it's not work for me. It's something that I enjoy. My name is Richard D'Souza. I'm the CEO, the founder of Altcoin Trader, which is a cryptocurrency exchange. It can be found at altcointrader.co.za. We've been around since 2015. So, you know, we've one of the early comers to the crypto space. South Africa has uh, got a reasonably small population. So our exchange is doing very well with one of the top exchanges in South Africa. Okay, that's really good to know. And I want to know, how did you transition from being the owner of NetSpace Internet Solutions to becoming our, the CEO of Altcoin Twitter, which is a crypto-based startup? So what are your views on that? How did you transition? Well, that's actually quite an interesting story. You know, um, NetSpace was a website development company. We used to program websites for our customers. It's really a difficult space to be in. It's a difficult space to prosper in. And one day I was researching alternative payment solutions because we've been creating a lot of online shops. And I stumbled across Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And as a lot of people in the space, um, I initially thought that this is a scam, this is never gonna work. But because of the nature of my job, I was forced to investigate a little bit more. And after a couple of hours on YouTube, I became a total Bitcoin and cryptocurrency evangelist. I realized that this was going to change the system, the financial system as we know it. I actually, a couple of months after this realization and started getting into crypto, I actually said to one of the guys that I worked with at NetSpace, I'm no longer working. I am now going to stop everything I'm doing. I'm dedicating my life to cryptocurrency. I'm going to build in the crypto space. And it was a very difficult decision at that time, but I had really had enough of battling. So I stopped everything I was doing and started building a cryptocurrency exchange. Well, that's really great because, you know, being a web developer and, you know, at 2015, crypto was still evolving much. It was like, you know, it is a thing right now, but back in 2015, it wasn't as big as it is right now. So it was a big step, I think being a web developer in 2015 and changing it to crypto. So that was a big step, I guess. So that's really great. And another transition is right now happening in Ethereum, which is like proof of work algorithm to proof of stake algorithm. So what are your views over that? How credible do you think Ethereum is with this transition? Because the most successful cryptocurrency right now, that is Bitcoin, is using proof of work. Look, I think that it is inevitable that Ethereum is going to have to upgrade. Um, and I say upgrade because I do believe that proof of stake is a better solution, especially for what we have these days. So I believe that it's only a matter of time and Ethereum is going to be forced to upgrade to proof of stake. Ethereum, I believe, is an absolutely amazing project. It's a project that is allowing the alternative financial system to be built on its rails. So um, obviously, when you are upgrading a project that has got billions and billions of dollars investing in it, it's a bit like trying to change a wheel on a car that's doing 100 miles an hour down the highway. It's not easy. You know, if a car had stopped, you can easily change that wheel, but it's in full swing. It's moving. And I believe that that change is going to have to be made. It's going to be have to be made carefully. And once that change is made, I think that we are going to continue to see this project grow and blossom and change the world financial system as we know it. Well, I kind of understand the technicalities behind that, but would you like to take a minute or so to explain what is proof of stake and proof of work to our viewers too? That would be great. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep it very general, but proof of work means that we have miners all over the world that are running computations and building the blocks. 
So often I think that the word miners is a little bit confusing because if you had to say that they were accountants, because that's essentially what they're doing, they're working out who sent what and where it went, and they are compiling all this information and putting it into a ledger, that ledger being the blockchain. So now we are having people do these computations and the computations are very easy to do because they're not, um, there's not a lot. But now what becomes difficult is who gets to claim the reward? Who gets to make that block? So what typically happens is that there's a mathematical problem that needs to be solved. And this mathematical problem becomes more and more difficult so that whoever solves that first actually is the one that is allowed to create the block. And that mathematical problem is why we call it work, proof of work, because the actual work in keeping the ledger is very easy. But deciding who gets the privilege of keeping the block is the difficult part. And that's why it's called proof of work. Now, proof of stake, it allows a more shared balanced approach. So in other words, there's not this resource. And as we know, Elon Musk and Tesla, and a lot of people have been um, venting their concerns about what we're doing to our planet and the amount of energy we are consuming. And although I don't personally buy into that argument, Proof of stake, I believe, is a lot more efficient. It helps. It is going to be a better way. And I certainly think it is a step up from the, the um, uh, sorry, proof of stake is a step up from proof of work, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that's really great. That's a really, really great, you know, a simple explanation, explanation I would say. Now, crypto is an invention, invention just like traditional markets. Humans have created just something bigger than themselves. And we are still in the process of understanding how this thing works. So what do you think are the technicalities right now involved in the field of crypto that a beginner should know before getting into crypto? Well, I think the fundamental thing about cryptocurrency is that there is no third party. In other words, if we take Bitcoin, for example, there's no Bitcoin company, there's no Bitcoin headquarters, there's no one that you can sue if something goes wrong with Bitcoin. This is money for the people created by the people. So in other words, it's created by um, contracts that are on the blockchain. So that's the first fundamental. Now that might have some disadvantages, but it's going to have a lot of major advantages. And that being that we know the distribution and the barriers to entry are going to be fair for all. There's one set of rules that everyone gets to play by. It's not like with the current financial system, where if you're a billionaire, you have got a different set of rules, a different set of tax rules, a different set of contacts that allow you to enter the space with a great advantage, as opposed to if you're starting, you can't get in. Quick example, if you are trying to deal in the normal financial system, you have to be 18 years or older before you can do anything. With a crypto uh, system, you can enter at any age. There's no restrictions. So the fair set of rules, we all know the rules. They're clearly defined, um, I believe, is one of the fundamental differences with cryptocurrencies. And beginners should start to consider that because it allows everyone a level playing field. Okay. Now, many youngsters, I, I agree to you, like these technicalities should be known by a beginner, but many youngsters or beginners get into the crypto with mindset of making money out of it, just like stocks. And they ha frequently have a question like, what makes crypto a more preferred option to invest in? Because stocks are believed to be much less volatile. So volatility is always something that we discuss with cryptocurrency, but let's be honest. I'm happy to take a little bit of volatility if I'm constantly seeing growth of hundreds of percent, and that you certainly don't see in stocks. So yes, what we're seeing is cryptocurrency being the best performing asset in the last 10 years. Absolutely, there's a lot of volatility, but the ways to get around volatilities, and maybe this is a tip for a lot of beginners, don't take a large sum of money and chuck it into cryptocurrency because you might be buying the high. Rather, get an understanding, go in slowly, buy on a monthly basis, dollar cost average. Once you do it that way, when you look back, most of the years with cryptocurrency, we are seeing percentage growth of hundreds of percent. Volatility, growth, I'll take the, the, the growth over the, and I'll take it with the volatility anytime as opposed to traditional stocks. Yeah, crypto is about high risk and high you know, returns. And, you know, um, I have a connecting question regarding that. Like there are index funds or ETFs in stock market. 
like S&P 500 in USA, Sensex and Nifty 50 in India. So what is the crypto equivalent to that? So there are actually crypto equivalents to that. And I'm not well versed in them, but one of them that I do know, it's actually run by a personal friend of mine, is it's called bluetoken.io. You can visit the website. And this is very much based around a traditional fund. In other words, there's a basket of cryptocurrencies that are all uh, put into a fund. And that fund, you know, uh, very often will outperform the single coins. So there are that type of thing. But I would like to add that the nature of cryptocurrencies, the nature of this decentralized world is that we are moving away from giving our monies to institutions, giving our monies to brokers, giving our money to people that will invest for us and make a profit. So while those funds do exist, and in many cases, they do create really good returns and it's good for beginners, the essence of decentralization and cryptocurrencies is that we need to try and move away from that type of structure, that type of traditional financial system. Ooh, yeah, that's really insightful to be honest. Um, now we have talked about crypto versus stock. Now I'd like to talk about crypto versus the US dollar because every now and then we get to hear that crypto is going to be you know, future currency. So how is that possible when we are competing with a currency which is much more stable like US dollar? Okay, now that's an interesting question, and I often answer that in this funny way. And just to give you an idea, people say to me, is there risk investing in dollars? No, it's a guaranteed loss. There's no risk, you know, you're going to lose. Is there risk investing in cryptocurrency? Maybe. Let me expand on that a little bit more. Holding dollars is like holding water in a bucket that's got a hole. You need to continually top that bucket up. Otherwise, it is going to become empty. The same way, if you've got dollars in your wallet, next year, you'll be able to buy less. The following year, you'll be able to buy less. Your dollars are melting. They are becoming worth less and less. The way that cryptocurrency is going to compete with the traditional financial systems is simply the fact that it is becoming more. So in other words, the dollar system is an inflationary system. The cryptocurrency system is a deflationary system. With dollars, you get punished for saving in the fact that your dollars will be worth less. With cryptocurrency, you are rewarded for saving. The first time ever, we have hard money. We have money that if you hold it and use it wisely, you will be rewarded. The fake news, the lies that you must save your dollars is insanity. But with cryptocurrency, it makes sense. Yeah, um, but like with the recent activities, people are likely to be, you know, disagreeing with this argument uh, in some place because, you know, after the Polynet hack, now there is liquid hack, which is worth USD 90 million, which is a lot. And therefore people might be, you know, quite skeptical about investing in crypto or like quite skeptical to adopting it as a currency. So what are your views over these like hacking things that are going around in the crypto space? So what we need to remember with cryptocurrency is we are starting. We have this amazing product. We're bringing it to humanity and it is the beginning. Is there going to be problems? Absolutely. So interesting thing with the Poly Network hack is that we got to a point which I found exciting and interesting that the hacker had the funds, but because the blockchain is transparent, everyone could see where those funds were. And after a little bit of communication, which was public communication taking place on Etherscan, we saw that the hacker might have realized that he can't actually get away with this money because not only is law enforcement going to hunt him down, but the community is watching him and it is being done in a public space. So there's a lot of things going on there. And we know after a long um, to and fro, those funds have actually now been returned. So I know that that doesn't directly answer your question. But the point that I'm trying to make is that people are very quick to say it's a dangerous space. You know, it's a crazy space. And my answer to that would be, it probably is a new space. And there is a certain amount of risk. Don't take all your money and throw it in. We don't change financial systems overnight. I think certainly in our lifetimes, we're going to see two financial systems running side by side. We are not going to get to the point where we're going to just see the dollar or the rand or you know, the euro just disappear. We are going to be working with both financial systems. 
our children, maybe our grandchildren, will finally transition over to this crypto financial system. So sure, it's not perfect. It can't come out perfect. It needs to be built to a better state. Yeah, and I would also like to say that crypto is also that attractive that people would, in the end would get attracted to it anyway. And it is now attractive to at this point that people are losing their sleep for it. Like once you know crypto, it is on your mobile phone. It is in your work desk. It is in your bedroom, it is even in your dreams. But if you sleep, then it will be in your dreams. But people are risking their like sleep to see the prices just go up and down. So how do you see the crypto addiction? Did you have any? And how do you see the way around it? Look, I think certainly we've all, if we've got into crypto and immersed ourselves in the technology, we've all seen a little bit of that addiction, you know, where you're constantly looking at your phone, that the price go up, massive depression, massive euphoria when the price goes up, you know, becoming a millionaire overnight and then losing it. And that's all an emotional roller coaster. But I think that once you mature in the space and you start to understand cryptocurrency and you realize that whatever money you put in today, you don't need to look at. Look at it at the end of the year. Invest over a long term. And in crypto, I would classify long term as you know two, three years. Then you start to see that that anxiety and that addiction and that fear of the potential loss because of the volatility starts to go away. And once you've been in this space, you start to mature and realize oh, it's down now, give it a year, it will be up possibly tenfold. So it's a very real thing. It's a very exciting thing. I think that's just something that brings a lot of people to the crypto space is this, it's a gold rush. You know, you're able to make money, you're able to lose money. But if we look at the fundamentals, if we look at where it's moving to, we look at the growth over the years, it's absolutely the best performing asset. We need to buy in over short periods, don't throw all your savings in, buy in over short over periods, sit back, relax, the growth, the um, riches, the fundamental growth is there. It is a sound investment, at least in my opinion. Well said. And to be honest, personally speaking, this is the hardest part to follow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I, I'm kind of sure that you might have heard about Chinese crypto crackdown and after these type of activities like Polynet hack and liquid hack and Chinese crypto crackdown, how can we like summarize the role of governments in the crypto space? I believe that cryptocurrencies are bigger than governments, they're bigger than countries, and it is a superior technology. Now we get to a situation where we have governments and let's be fair to government. They are busy. They've got a lot of things that they have to deal with. They've got laws, they've got regulations, they've got finances, they've got countries to run, they've got millions of people depending on it. They don't have time to bring out new innovation. I mean, can you imagine the government going, well, we've had this financial system for hundreds of years. I guess I don't think it's working. No, they're never going to do that. They're never going to bring out new innovation. And in fairness, they can't, they don't have time. So the private sector has come up with an alternative. And of course, the government don't want to change the status quo. But my belief is that there is no option. Cryptocurrency is much bigger than a couple of people wanting to change. Cryptocurrency is something that is going to change the world. It is going to change the financial system as we know it. And governments, they can adopt it or they can choose to try and stop it and slow it down. There's no choice of stopping it. You can only slow it down. So in the end, crypto emerges. Crypto cannibalizes everything else. But as I've said, let's not get carried away. This doesn't happen in our lifetime. People change slowly. But people do transgress and move over to a better system. So it's just a matter of time. It's not a matter of when. This noise, this aggravation, countries trying to ban things, it's just simply not going to work. Yeah. It's past the stage of being able to stop. Yeah, that's really great. And I like the point that you say people changes slowly. And that's really astounding, I guess, because it's going to take time. We, we just have to believe that. Also now, coming back to like altcoin trader, um, I would like to know how can one buy a Bitcoin with it? What is the time of withdrawal if I want to withdraw my like cryptocurrency? So would you like to throw some light over that? 
Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, Altcoin Trader is a, an exchange, much like any of the other exchanges, you know, um, that you see around the world. You simply register, deposit either fiat money or cryptocurrencies. You can then um, withdraw it. Withdrawing cryptocurrencies is a very quick um, thing these days, you know. Look, obviously, with centralized exchanges, you do need to um, figure yourself. You do need to give us the correct documentation because you can make small withdrawals um, without that, but it gets to a point where it's cut off and we say, guys, we need the documentation before the withdrawals can happen. So if you make sure that that documentation is correctly done up front, withdrawals are going to take a matter of minutes and you should have the coins in your wallet. So um, it's as easy as that. It's a really easy exchange to use. A lot of people coming back to us and saying, guys, this is one of the most simple exchanges to use. We've got products like Easy Save, Easy Loan, Easy Buy. And all of these products just are focused on user experience and making it easy. So to all the viewers, you heard that the link would be the link for all coin trader would be in description. Just start using it. And now I would like to know after the Polynet hack, after the liquid hack. How do you implement the security or regulation in your like company, Altcoin Twitter? So obviously any exchange will have multiple hack attempts. And you know, there's no different with Altcoin Trader. We have people attempting to hack the exchange basically all the time. Um, I think these days that computer software programming, uh, you know, if you run a sound business and you put a little bit of thought into your security, you are able to protect the client's funds, the company, and everything that happens on the space. So we have never found a situation where our uh, site has been effectively hacked. You know, obviously, sometimes people will log into an account, but most of the time that's because the people have been careless with their passwords or they haven't enabled two-factor authentication. But um, security is one of the major things on any crypto exchange. When this exchange was built, I would have to say that 80% of the uh, effort was spent on, pro, um, on security, while 20% was spent on functionality and programming. So, you know, we wouldn't have been around for, for so long, six years, if um, hacking was ever a situation. We've seen many exchanges go down in the past because of being hacked and yeah. exploited. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And also, when I was like asking about Altcoin Twitter, you use the term easy tape. I also like got through it when I was visiting your website. So would you like to throw some light over that feature of your website, easy save? Absolutely. Look, I've got a YouTube channel where I teach people about DeFi and how to stake and how to make passive income with their cryptocurrencies. Now, the problem that I find, people coming back to me in the comments going, you know, Richard, it's just too complicated. I don't get it. I don't understand MetaMask. I don't know how to change MetaMask to another chain, to change it to Polygon and Matic. And so many people just battling to actually get to grips with the DeFi space. So what we did as a team, what we did as a company, we said, look, there's so many advantages. There's so much money to be made in this space. Why don't we just simplify the process and allow our clients to just put it in easy safe? So we've got a couple of coins on easy safe. You just go there. It's two or three clicks. There's no fees. There's no uh, lockup periods. And you can see your funds growing within a matter of minutes. We've tried to take all the complexity out of DeFi savings. And it's a centralized saving system. Obviously, with that said, we still encourage our clients to use the DeFi space because I believe it is the future. And in many instances, you can make a little bit more with the DeFi space. But the easy save, our clients are loving it. A lot of people that are just not interested in DeFi, they have more trust in centralized institutions, are absolutely enjoying that easy save. So it depends on you as an individual. We recommend the decentralized space, but if you're not up to it, and if you are worried about losing your funds, you've got the safety and the security of a centralized saving system. So we've brought all those advantages to our clients. Okay, okay. Yeah, that, I kind of understand about TZ Save and how, and you also encourage that it is centralized, so use the DeFi space because it's the future. Yeah, that's great. There is a nosy question that I'm getting at the moment in my mind, it is, did you design your website? Because you have been a web developer in the past, I guess. 
Okay, so to answer that question, um, I actually started coding it in 2013. It took me 16 months to bring the project to market. At that stage, I was the only programmer. There was no help. But obviously, um, the, the, the basic site is still there, but we've got now a team of developers. We've got a lot of people, and the site is morphing into something else. So although there's still a lot of my original code in the site i'm hoping that you know very soon that code will all be gone and we'll have a new um you know absolutely up-to-date properly secure site but right now a lot of that code is still my original code and it's still working it's still running it's six years down the line i think any developer knows that when you build a foundation you never actually change the entire thing you just upgrade 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 and eventually it outgrows what was originally done yeah, I can completely relate to that. I have been in that phase also. Now, <laughs> there is another, you know, interesting thing that is happening in the crypto space. The investment in cryptocurrencies just doubled in the first half of 2021. So where do you see this growth going and what are your reactions on that? I am extremely bullish on the crypto space. I think that, you know, um, we've seen crypto and we've seen outrageous price predictions all the time. And very often we've seen these price predictions come true. Then we've seen crashes and everyone going, see, I told you so, it's a scam, it's not a good investment. And then just as soon as they about saying those words, the price is up again. So my thoughts are that long-term crypto is a very, very positive bet. It's a safe bet. If you want to ask me, should I invest now? Should I make some quick money? What should I buy? you're missing the point. You're asking the wrong question. You should be not asking that. You should be saying, is this a long-term investment? And as I said earlier, long-term, one, three years, you know, if you are saying, if I buy this and I hold it for a couple of years, is it going to be a good investment? Well, then my opinion, obviously not financial advice, but my opinion is you're not going to be going wrong buying cryptocurrencies. We've seen this historically for over 10 years. How long is it going to take us people to understand that this curve is upwards? There might be volatility, but it's upward. Cryptocurrency is going through a phase of mass adoption. This is going to change the world. This is going to change everything we know. Not getting into it is the equivalent of saying, I don't know about this internet thing. Do you think it's going to work out? Are you going to be asking that question? No. Cryptocurrencies is here to stay. Yeah, you just said what I got in my mind also. So 100% agreed. And that's the it for the session. I, I, to be honest, I didn't realize I lost the count of time. I, I'm just feeling like that just 10 minutes, just 10 minutes have passed. But, you know, it was it. And to all the viewers watching this session, I hope you enjoyed it because to be honest, that was really insightful and really really you know knowledgeable podcast for me with richard and richard i would like to know your thoughts did you enjoy it and any closing statement you would like to give i always enjoy talking about cryptocurrency it's something i'm passionate i love that just like you it seems like we've been talking for a couple of minutes but when you look at the clock it says a different story but yeah absolutely i just feel that we have a responsibility to the community we have a responsibility to humankind to communicate what is coming and for you to think that cryptocurrency is not coming for you to think that cryptocurrency isn't going to cannibalize everything we know blockchain um, nfts if everything's not going to be tokenized you're not really understanding what the future is bringing so Guys, it's not about altcoin trader. It's not about do you prefer Bitcoin over Ethereum? It's about the entire space. It's about where we are moving as a human species. Exciting times. We are seeing history unfold in front of our eyes. And yeah, I always enjoy being able to discuss this with like-minded people. So thank you once again for having me on the show. Yeah, thanks to you two for coming here. And also to all the viewers watching it, Whole world is investing in crypto. Why are you bidding? What are you bidding for? The link is in the description. Start trading. Okay. And this was it for the podcast. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. And subscribe. That's the main part. If you enjoy these insightful sessions with the experts, if you want to know more about cryptocurrencies, just do it. Just do it right now. And my name is Hirsch. I am from Money and Me Podcast, signing out.